Stop letting other people dictate your life and take your time. Because if they do that, you'll never have the income, impact, and influence that you want. Hey, what would it be worth to you if I gave you an extra 10 hours per week? Now, like, listen, if you're making $100 an hour, that's a minimum of 1000 bucks. And if we do that every week, this is a $50,000 a year podcast show that you are going to listen to when I give you back those 10 hours, okay? And when you have these 10 hours, you'll actually be able to go and make more money or spend time with your kids. So it's going to be even worth more to you. And that's what we're going to give you, all right? Hey, I'm Craig Valentine, the world's most disciplined man, and this is going to be the most fun you have ever had making more time, being more productive, doing your time management, okay? This is not going to be boring. Instead, it's going to be so tactical, practical, and magical for your life, all right? So I want to take you through the things that I take my Empire Mastermind clients through at all of our meetings, okay? So usually it's me and Bedros here, obviously, but Bedros is away, so Craig is going to play with your time management on this show. And usually what we do is we sit down our clients. You know, obviously we have great speakers come in and we download how to make more money, but we also show them how to make more time. So they become better leaders and they can become better mothers and fathers because they have more of those minutes that matter and the moments that matter with their kiddos. All right. So the first thing that you're going to do is a time journal because we can't help you if we don't know where you are. Now, you all know that Bedros and I, we cut our teeth in the business world as personal trainers. And when I was a personal trainer, I came across, across this study in Men's Health Magazine. And they talked about how when people did a food journal, they wrote down everything that they ate, those people lost more weight than the people who didn't use a food journal. 30% more weight. And I realized as I got into coaching entrepreneurs like you and high performers where every minute matters, I realized, holy cow. Those people who were trying to lose weight, they didn't know what they were eating. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know why they were eating. And we could translate that over to our time. You don't know why you are so busy. You don't know why you spend the day in activity but have nothing accomplished. You don't know why you end the day at 5 o'clock going, man, what the heck happened? Because you don't have it documented. So you use a time journal. Now, a time journal, I got this idea from that food research, but also from a guy named George Ross. George Ross was Donald Trump's lawyer on The Apprentice. And he came to a Dan Kennedy event that I was at in like 2007 or 2008. And he stood up at the front. He said, everybody that comes into the Trump organization, we make them do a time journal. I don't know. Maybe they do this at the White House right now. It'd be pretty cool if they did. And when you do the time journal, you take a lined piece of paper, and you write out you know, what time you get up at, and then every 20 minutes over the course of the day until you go to bed, you write down what you were doing and how you were feeling. Now, have you ever heard Bedros talk about halt? Hungry, angry, lonely, tired? He said that we act out, well, Kevin, his therapist, said we act out when we are hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Back to the food journal. You come home from work, you're sitting around, you're bored, you're a little bit hungry, you're not, maybe you're not angry, but you're lonely and you're tired because you had a hard day at work and dinner's not for another hour. And the next thing you know, you've eaten three cookies. You didn't need them. You might've been a little bit hungry, but you weren't three cookies or 750 calories hungry. And now you gotta go and have you know, 750 calories at dinner. And that's why you're adding a pound a week, every week, because you're eating at the wrong time. And it's the same with our time. Why are we going on Instagram at 11 o'clock in the morning when we should be work it, working? Why are we going on Netflix at 7 o'clock at night as soon as dinner is done and we're watching four shows? We're either hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. But the thing is, if you don't do a time journal, you'll never connect those dots. So you go through, let's, let's say you get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Okay, You wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. You might be tired, but you're going to go and do your morning routine. 6.20, 6.40, 7 o'clock, all the way through the course of the day so that you can find three things. The first thing you're going to discover by doing the time journal is what's called OCD loops. I learned this from Evan Pagan, a friend of mine in the internet marketing world. Evan Pagan taught this at one of his events, and I thought, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. We're all losing time to OCD loops. I had an OCD loop back in 2006 when I had my anxiety attacks of going on Facebook. That was when I got my first Facebook account. 
I would go into my email, I would go into my ClickBank stats, that's where I was making a ton of money at the time, and I'd like, every hour I'd be hitting refresh, and then I would go into ESPN.com. So I would go Facebook, email, ClickBank stats, ESPN.com, then loop back up to the top, OCD loop, OCD loop, 45 minutes, an hour would go by, and I would just be going from one website to another. Now today we're going app to app to app to app, TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. Oh, let me go back to TikTok and away we go. Why are we doing that? So if you write down 11 o'clock, I went on social media and 1120, I'm still there. 1140, 12 o'clock, 1220, I'm finally out. Why was I in there? Well, you know, I was tired, man. I've been working since seven o'clock in the morning, four hours in a row. All right. Well, now what that means is that at maybe at 9.30, you should have a break, and maybe at 11 o'clock, you should go for a five-minute walk outside so that you can get some sunshine, some fresh air, you come back in. And when you do this time journal, you identify those things, and then you circumvent those loops so that you don't waste any more time. Every minute matters in your life because the moments matter. Next thing you're gonna learn is your magic time. You're gonna discover the time of day when you're three times more creative, productive, and energetic than any other time of day. And when you know that, when you know that 9 o'clock in the morning for the next 90 minutes, you can get more done in that 90 minutes than you can all afternoon, then you go, holy cow, I can't take phone calls. I can't do meetings. I can't do email. I can't do silly stuff. I can't be on Instagram from 9 till 1030 every morning. Because if I block that time, that magic time, I can crank out my articles. I can write my video sales letters. I can create my webinars, the stuff that moves the needle in my business. But if you're filling that time with busy work or meetings or you're taking phone calls or you're answering every email that dings during that time, man, you're bleeding money. You're bleeding minutes. You're bleeding your life. You're bleeding legacy and impact because you haven't protected that. I like to say you need to protect your magic time like my dog protects its dog bowl when it's eating food. You gotta be ruthless and relentless about it. So what you'll find if you do a time journal is you will identify the time of day when you naturally are in the flow. And when you know the time of day when you're naturally in the flow, that's magic time, you're three times more creative, productive, and energetic. And you'll protect that, you won't have anything else in that time and that alone, that one 90 minute block, having that will be a game changer for your life. If you can find two 90 minute blocks, you know, the second one won't be as magical, but it'll still be good. If you can get two 90 minute blocks of deep work done a day, you're way ahead of the competition because most people, what they're doing is being reactive all day long. You're being proactive when you're planning and boom, that's a game changer. Now, the third thing that you're gonna learn is your, your worth, your hourly worth. So if you work 40 hours a week for 50 weeks a year, do you know how much money you will make if you're making $50 an hour? Let me run that by you again. You're making $50 an hour. You're working 40 hours a week. And you're working 50 weeks out of the year. The math is simple. I learned this when I was a factory worker. I saw these people making 20 bucks an hour in the factory and I thought, that sounds like a lot of money, and it was to like a kid who's in college. And I thought, what do they make in a year? And I realized they work 40 hours a week and they work 50 weeks in a year, that's 2,000 hours. So all you do is you take somebody's hourly pay rate, you double it and times it by 1,000 and you get their annual salary. So somebody who's making $20 an hour makes $40,000 in a year. If you wanna make $100,000 in a year, or if you are work making $100,000 in a year, that means your time is worth $50 an hour if you work 40 hours a week for 50 weeks in a year. So what you're going to do is through the time journal, you're going to see how many hours you're working. Maybe you're working 10 hours a day, six days a week, 60 hours in a week, and maybe you're only making $120,000. Well, geez, your hourly worth is not that much. That is a hard pill to swallow. You might be walking around, yeah, I make 150 grand a year. Great. You work 70 hours a week. You're not actually making that much money per hour. That's not empire building wealth. So you get a hard reality check when you line up how many hours you're working versus your actual income. And you go, dang, something's got to change. Something's got to change. 
And then you realize, well, in those 70 hours, oh, I'm spending 10 hours at the UPS store going back and forth, and I'm spending five hours cutting my lawn and doing my lawn care because I'm too cheap to outsource it. And that means that's five hours taken away from big strategic thinking or filming video for my social media, or I never have time to make that video sales letter because I'm always you know, doing my own bookkeeping. That's silly. You can't do that stuff. Once you know how much you make per hour, so let's go back to if you were making, let's say you're making $200,000 in a year and you're only working 40 hours a week. How much money is that per hour? Right, $200,000 per year, 40 hours, 50 weeks, you are making $100 per hour. $100 per hour times 40 hours a week times 50 weeks in a year is $200,000. All right, so great. Now your hour of work is worth $100. And you're going to the UPS store? That is something you can outsource, delegate for $12 to $15 an hour. And if so if your hour is worth $100 and you're doing anything from bookkeeping, even your sales calls, you can pay people to do that for way less than $100 an hour, which means you stop doing that junk and you start focusing on writing the sales letters and leading the team and becoming that great empire builder, your hourly worth is gonna go way up, you're gonna make way more money and you're gonna stop doing the $10 an hour tasks. So you have to know what you're worth and then that dictates what you do and you have better use of your time. That's why the time journal is so powerful. So again, it gets you out of OCD loops, gets you more magic time, and helps you understand what you should be doing and what you should stop doing and delegating and eliminating and automating. That is a game changer. Now the next thing that we do from that is we identify our not to do list. Our not to do list. So there are certain things that we talk about in the five figure lifestyle that you should never do. You no know, snoozing, scrolling, smoking, drinking, joking, toking, you know, all that sort of silly stuff. Don't do that. Don't hit the snooze button because that robs you of minutes and moments that matter. Don't be scrolling. Don't get addicted to social media. Use business media. Don't let social media be used on you so you take back control of your time. Now you have more minutes. You have more time to read the books, right? Everybody says, oh, I want to read a book a week this year. And then you go through and you read and you're like, I read a book a year. Not a book a week a year, a book a year. Well, you're going to be very frustrated by it because you, how much time do you spend on social media? Have you ever used like the, the screen time app or the rescue me or the rescue time app and figured out how much time you actually spend on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, man, you will be terrified, terrified. And it's robbing you of reading time, of studying time, of connecting time with people, of learning time. You could be studying how to become a great copywriter. Instead, you're watching dog videos on Instagram. I've been there, I understand, I know how much time that that social media can rob you of. So make sure you're not losing the time. So you're not to-do list, do not go on Instagram until after you have gotten your most important task done for the day. Do not check your email until after 10 o'clock in the morning. Do not snooze, do not scroll, do not watch more than one Netflix show per night. Do not drink on school nights, Sunday through Thursday. No alcohol because you wake up groggy the next morning. You might say, oh, but I, I fall asleep faster. Well, yeah, but research shows one of the worst things you can do for your sleep is to drink alcohol before bedtime. One of the best things you can do for your sleep is to go to bed at the same time every night and get up at the same time every morning. If you want more information on sleep, I read this great book called Why We Sleep by Dr. Matthew Walker. It will blow your mind about sleep, totally change your habits, and make you into a high performer or support you on your journey to becoming a high performer. But snoozing, scrolling, watching TV, checking your electronics, checking your Instagram right before bed, that ruins your sleep and that goes on the not to do list. So have your not to do list and then when you know the things you shouldn't be doing, eliminate them. If you eat a bag of chips a night, don't have chips in your house, okay? If you drink too much during the week, don't keep alcohol in your house until Friday. Go and grab a bottle of wine on Friday, but don't be that person with 50 bottles of wine downstairs in the basement where you can go and get one just like that. Make sure you eliminate the temptations and distractions. Destroy them from your life. Build a fence around yourself that fosters your high performance habits. Make life easy to succeed. Make it easy and automatic to do the right things. That's how you succeed, okay? Boom, next thing that you need to understand after you have your not to-do list, after you've done your time journal, 
you're going to ask these four questions. This is where the magic happens. It really supports what we've already talked about. Question number one is what do you hate doing? What do you hate doing in your business? Now, you might hate something that no one else can do. You can't delegate it. You can't automate it. You can't eliminate it. You just hate where it is in your schedule or you hate how often you're doing it because you aren't batching and blocking your time. Maybe you hate filming videos and every single day you feel like you have to film a video for social media. No, you don't have to do it every day. You can do it all in one shot once per month with proper planning. So you do proper planning, you go in there, you're not looking forward to it, you crank it all, you get it all done. We filmed six Empire episodes in a day. We don't hate it, but we do it to maximize our time. I hated doing calls in the morning. I hated, you know, because that invaded my magic time. And yet I have clients in Singapore, in Australia, all over Asia, some in, in the UK, and I thought, I don't want to inconvenience them. I'm going to do the calls first thing in my morning. Well, that was stupid. I was angry the night before because I had a call at 7 o'clock in the morning. So I switched it and I said, I'm only going to do those calls in the evening for Australia and Singapore that are 12 hours, 15 hours ahead. It's going to be a little inconvenient to them, but it's going to be way more convenient. I'm a better coach. I'm going to give them more results by doing it that way. So I changed it. All I had to do was change my calendar link so no one could book a call in the morning. And that was a significant problem in my life. And it just shows you, you probably have time problems in your life that are so easy to solve. I said, put it on my not-to-do list. No calls in the morning. Boom. Fix that. And you can do it too. You have to take control. You have to make the world play by your rules. I've been doing that since I was young. I did not want a conventional life. I didn't want normal. I didn't want average. I was okay with being the weirdo that owned my time. Pedro says, be a control king. A control king. Control freak. Control the time. Make the world come to the meetings when you want to have the meetings because you can't have a meeting in your magic time. And if you think, oh, well, I've got a boss, I can't do this, baloney. You can negotiate and persuade people to play by your rules if you learn the skills of negotiation and persuasion. You might have to sacrifice something else, but if something is really important, you can take control of it and own it. Stop letting other people dictate your life and take your time. Because if they do that, you'll never have the income, impact, and influence that you want. And I know you can get better at this. So, that's the first thing. What do you hate doing and how can you fix that problem? Second question, what should you stop doing? Absolutely stop, never do again. And not delegate to somebody, but just completely stop. And you can ask this question for your team members too. They're doing stuff that they should stop doing and nobody should take it up. I always use this analogy. So I live in Toronto, very large Italian and Portuguese community concentrated in one part of town, little Italy and little Portugal right beside each other. I walk through there all the time with my dog and I see these lovely, older, elderly couples of that community picking weeds out of the sidewalk cracks. Because that's just the way they are. They love their little manicured lawns. They're like this big, but oh, heaven forbid, there's a weed in the sidewalk crack out in front of their house. So they spend their life picking weeds out of the sidewalk cracks. It is so insignificant. It means nothing. It will change nothing in their lives, but they waste their time doing that. I sound heartless about it. I don't care. It's like, that does not matter. And yet you are doing similar stuff in your life. For me, I was doing podcasts with 50 people listening to it, spending an entire hour getting set up, doing the show, then you know, transitioning in my next activity. I'm like, you dummy. There's 50 people listening to this. In an hour, you could have filmed three YouTube videos. And most of my YouTube videos get watched 10,000, 100,000 times. I have a YouTube video that's been watched four and a half million times. It took me five minutes to film that video. What's a better use of my time? A five minute video that's watched four and a half million times or an hour long podcast that gets heard by 50 people? Like, don't be a dummy, Craig. Use your time better. So what should I stop doing? Podcasts that have less than 2,500 downloads per show. If you have a podcast and you send me a message on Instagram, I answer all my Instagram direct messages myself, and you say, hey, Craig, I'd love to be in your pod I'd love to have you on my podcast, I'd say, great, send me a message when you can show me that you get 2,500 downloads per show. Other than that, I'm sorry, I just, I'm, I'm not saying yes to podcasts in that situation. That's the bottom line. Because it's not fair to me, to my family, to my, to my health, to my fitness, to be doing eight hours of podcasts a day for 400 listeners. It's just not how I'm going to live my life. 
I'm going to make the world play by my rules. Hit 2,500 and I'll do it. And you can call me an a-hole, you can call me a jerk, whatever you want. But Oprah isn't doing podcasts for 50 people. And you need to be the Oprah of your life, the superstar of your life. Think about how would Oprah run your business? How would Oprah run your life if Oprah was running your life or your business? Think about that and then operate at her superstar level. Next question, the third question of the four, what is not your job? What are you doing every single day that is freaking not your job? Taking out the trash, cutting the lawn, going to Kinko's, going to, I don't know if Kinko's even exists anymore, going to the UPS store, doing your bookkeeping drives me nuts when entrepreneurs making more than $40,000 a year are doing their own bookkeeping. Like, you're not a good bookkeeper, first of all. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know how to do your taxes. You're probably missing out on huge savings. And yet you are doing this because you're too cheap or too pig-headed to let somebody else do it. Pay a bookkeeper. Pay an accountant to do your taxes. Get away from that stuff. You were not put here to do that. You were not put here to clean your house. You were not put here to make all of your meals. You were not here to do all of that stuff. You were put here to have a huge impact. And if you're doing these tiny little chores, it's not your job and you need to switch out of it. Bedros has this great story from years ago. He was fixing a sprinkler for his wife, Diana, and he gave a sales call to his assistant. His assistant is not trained in sales calls. She lost $2,500 or $5,000 sale because he was spending his time in a $10 an hour task fixing a sprinkler. And that was his aha moment when he hit himself in the head and said, Bedros, you dummy. You're stepping over dollars to pick up dimes. And that's what you're doing. Stop stepping over dollars to pick up dimes. If it's not your job, delegate it, eliminate it, or automate it. That's what you need to do. Fourth question, what is your distraction? What is your, or are your distractions in life? Netflix, alcohol, sports, TV shows. For me, Instagram, guilty, all right? Listen, I'm not perfect. The system's perfect but I'm not perfect. And so sometimes I'm on Instagram too much and I justify it. We all justify our distractions. Oh man, I got to catch up on this Game of Thrones because everybody talks about it at work. And if I'm not talking about it at work, that's not a good justification. I got to be on Instagram. Oh, Craig Valentine's always on Instagram because I can sell stuff on Instagram. But listen, watching Corgi videos on Instagram. And now I watch seal videos. I don't know what the heck is going on in this world, but there are people that keep raccoons and otters, like little mini seals, whatever they are, as pets. And I'm fascinated by these videos. And yes, I spend five to 10 minutes a day watching these and forward them, forwarding them to my friends because Instagram has sucked me in. I'm not perfect, that's my vice. Corgi videos as well. I gotta stop it. I'm telling you right now, so I'm gonna stop it because I got public accountability because I'm not gonna watch another freaking otter video on Instagram. They are so weird and they scream. I don't know why anyone would keep them as a pet. They are not cute and raccoons, don't get me started on that. But we all have our distractions. We all have our distractions and that's costing me 10, 20, 30 minutes a day where I could be reading a book. Instead of reading a book a year, I should be reading a book a week. I did about 40 books last year because I cut out the Instagram. And Instagram is starting to creep back into my life and I haven't read that many books this year. So I'm making this promise to you, public accountability. You gotta say, hey Craig, well, how many books are you, or what book are you reading now? How many pages are you reading per day? You guys gotta be on me just like I'm on you, all right? So those four questions. What do you hate? What's, what should you stop doing? What's not your job? And what are your distractions? And when you answer that brutally, honestly, and relentlessly and ruthlessly, and you make those changes, then you move into the next question, which is, how can you fix this? What's the first step to fixing this? Who can you contact for help? And the answers are simple. You know, block my Instagram using an app blocker like selfcontrol.io, get public accountability for the habit change you wanna make, Get a calendar link and don't let people block in your magic time. Block that out. Make yourself unavailable. Communicate better and, sh and reset expectations with people. It's that simple. You take back control of your life. Now you got 10, 20 plus hours. I have a client, a guy named Frank Den Blanken, came to one of my workshops, was making $10,000 a month. Good money, you know, okay money. Working 15 hours a day. Today, he works 15 hours less per week. So he's working, he still works a lot compared to the average person, but he makes over $200,000 a month. He goes on more vacations than ever. He goes on more vacations than me, and I go on a lot of trips. 
And this guy's living his life because he's gone through this time audit. You have to do this every 90 days. Ask those four questions every 90 days. You will make 10 hours because you need to make time for what matters. You will never find time for what matters. Time is not hiding under the bed with your ab rocker collecting dust. You have to go and make time for what matters. Writing your book, writing your sales letters, getting better at sales, improving your copywriting, improving your relationships, improving your health. You make time for what matters. That's what it's all about. All right. So this is Craig Ballantyne in a big, big rant today because Bedros wasn't here. He was off making time for something else that was very important. And he put me in charge. And so I brought the thunder for you. So you've got those hours. This is worth $100,000 a year to you minimum. Go out there and use that time for the best. Make more time for your family. Get yourself back in shape. Read those books. Improve those skills. Grow your empire and live the life of your dreams. This is a game changer. Go and do it. And what I want you to do is go to iTunes, give us a five-star review. I want you to drop comments on YouTube. I want you to send me a message on Instagram at Real Craig Ballantyne and tell me how this helped. All right? I want this podcast, this show to have a huge impact on you and your family and your finances this year and for the rest of your life. All right? So drop us those messages. And then when you're ready to go to the next, next, next level, go to pedroscoolian.com forward slash empire and apply to come to one of our events. And we'll not only download more of this to you to make more time, but we'll download everything that we know and we do and our guest experts do to help you make more money. More time, more money, more impact, more empire. We'll see you soon.